Hi everybody, welcome back to the Good in Life channel. I'm Kevin. So Deanna and I have been shooting a lot of videos. Uh, we're getting some of them posted. It takes quite a while to do the editing. Uh, I'm finding out the hard way. Uh, one of the things that's come up while we're doing all of this is the hard drive space on the computer is getting chewed up very rapidly. So I ordered a new hard drive. So, got a package in from Amazon, and as sometimes is the case, you don't quite know if you're uh, going to get everything or not, so we shall see. Ah, perfect. So, in this case, there's the new hard drive. But one thing I also needed to order for my particular computer was cables. So I have spare drive bays in the computer where I can stick in an additional hard drive and I bought the computer that way purposely so I could expand it. Um, but there are power cables for the spare drive bays but there's no data cables. So these are the data cables that I need as well. So. I've got a four terabyte drive to add into the computer. And just so you know, this video is really made for people who haven't done this sort of thing before. And some, I'm going to share some things that they need to know or that you need to know. So why did I buy a four terabyte drive? There's larger drives out there. In fact, some that were larger and didn't cost that much more. One of the things that you need to do if you're getting a hard drive for your computer is check the technical specifications. So for my computer, this is the largest size hard drive that it would take. So in the manual, there's storage specifications. So there was some information on data transfer rate, six gigabits, gigabytes per second. Um, which this drive has, but there was also a size limitation. So you might wonder why in the world would there even be a size limitation? And you might be able to just run out, buy a drive, uh, pop it in uh, using some of my instructions and uh, everything works fine, but you may find that you've bought something too large and it doesn't work. So the reason for that is inside the computer, something people don't think about very often, there's actual hardware. So there's a central processing unit, there's a circuit board called a motherboard, and on that circuit board, there are lines called address buses and data buses, and there's a certain number of those. And the more of those there are, the more addresses the CPU or computer can actually speak with. So. I don't know why there's an actual limitation inside my computer. I used to follow technical data and speeds of CPUs and memory capacity and stuff uh, for a very long time, but I've been doing electronics for a very long time and the numbers keep changing so fast and going up so fast, it kind of started to feel pointless. So what you need to know is before you go out and buy a drive, you need to know what type Typically, it's a SAT drive, um, three and a half inch size is quite standard, but in your specs, it'll tell you if there's a maximum size, and typically there is a maximum size that your computer will take. So I've got the drive, I've got the cable, so I can go and shut my computer down and get it ready to uh, do the installation. If you're going to be doing an installation, make sure you close all your applications, shut your computer right off, don't just put it to sleep, um, because to add hardware that's electrical, you need to have the power turned right off and unplugged, both for the safety of the hardware and for your own safety. So now I'm going to go off to the computer and I'll show you a couple of things that you should do before you start going inside. Okay, so I've got my computer fully shut down. As you can obviously tell from the video, 
my computer is not in a very convenient spot to work on. It's a dark cubby hole under the desk space. With your computer, before you disconnect things, you should um, make a diagram or ideally just take a picture with your phone so that you can put all the cables back into the same spot. I've got mine set up so it's pretty easy to do. This white cable goes up to a USB port sharing device up top so I don't have to pull the computer out to plug things in and unplug them as I add accessories like cameras to load in video, things like that. So we'll unplug that. This little green cable here, this one here, goes up to speakers and it's color coded. Ideally, it would be color coded on your computer as well. If it's not, there could be a little uh, stamped in diagram that shows sound going to a speaker. So you unplug that one, power cable, and this last one here is for the monitor, the HDMI cable. Uh, watch with this one. Sometimes a computer will have a port on the regular motherboard for the HDMI, as my computer does in here, but I have a special graphics card that does uh, higher end graphics, so I need to plug into that correct spot. This one's a little tough to get out. So there we go. So this is ready to take to uh, an area where I can open the case and do the installation. So that's what we'll do next. Okay, so we got the computer out where it can be worked on and there's more light, thankfully. So it depends again on your computer and your case. Often in the past, a computer case, you had to undo some screws to get into it. My case, uh, fortunately, that's not required. Um, so all I have to do is move an unlock lever and then pull on this other part here. And you still gotta wrestle a little bit because it's a firm connection, but basically the case just pops off like that. Uh, one thing you should keep in mind before going into your computer is some of the electronic components inside are sensitive to static. So you wouldn't want to be sitting on like a cloth chair where you rub around and or maybe any kind of a chair where you already know that when you're sitting on that chair and you get up, when you touch something, you get a spark and a snap. Um, so you need to avoid that. The other thing that's important in, uh, in a professional electronics workshop, um, people will often have anti-static mats that are connected via wires to the earth ground and they do very special things to make sure they're not damaging, say, products that they're building or products that they're repairing. Typically, an average homeowner doesn't have an anti-static mat and an anti-static strap and cord and things to wear. So what you need to do when you're working on your computer, again, like I said, avoid any kind of chairs where you know you're going to be building up a static charge if you're sitting there. Uh, the other thing, though, is just to make sure touch the metal inside the computer. And we used to joke about this a little bit in the electronics world because the term for that is actually called discharging yourself. Um, but basically what it means is any electrical charge that might be built up on your skin and your body will dissipate into the metal frame of the computer and you'll be at a single potential. So you won't have a, a, a giant voltage that's accumulated and then you touch something and snap and maybe damage components inside your computer. So you just gotta give it a touch like this and then be careful you're not rubbing around. 
So now that I've got this open, I'll tilt it up. So there's a uh, other camera I'm using just to the side here. So we'll get a view of the inside. So inside here, some of these uh, empty spots here are what I was talking about with uh, the term drive bays and a space being available to put the hard drive in there. So I've got a few spots. You can see here, these are the power cables here. And as you can see, the power cable is available for another drive but there's no place for a data cable and the data connect cable connections are uh, way in the back there. So I'll, I'll zoom in there in a second. So computer's ready to go. So we just got to get into the packages here and uh, get our new stuff out. Uh, one thing that uh, you're going to need, which I haven't even grabbed for myself yet, is uh, typically you need a Phillips head screwdriver to mount these in place. So the drive's all packaged up nicely in some uh, protective bubble wrap here. So that's uh, good to see. Slide that off. And like I was mentioning with static, you see this bag has kind of a, a pinkish color to it. This is an anti-static bag. So they are specially made so that they won't build up static charge. So when you open this, again, another precautionary thing to make sure you don't zap some of your components and you put your thing in and it's dead on arrival or so you think, but actually you killed it. Uh, you can see here, there's some gold colored connectors and typically that's actually gold on there but it's so thin it really wouldn't be uh, worth anything you don't want to touch anything that's that color or on the circuit boards so just keep your hands clear off to the side and again just hold the metal that's the frame of the hard drive so we'll get that open And I see that this drive, pull my glasses down so I can actually see, the drawbacks are getting old. Um, yeah, 7200 RPM, which is a high speed drive. Some of the drives available for sale will have a slower turning speed than that. Um, because I've got this specifically for video editing, I bought a high speed drive, which they do cost a little bit more money. So if you're not doing things like video editing or gaming uh, or somebody using your computer maybe doing gaming, then you don't need to worry about getting the 7200. You can get the lower value. But I see holes for screws for mounting, but I don't see any screws. So got to look inside the computer and see if there's screws available to mount into the bay. So... We'll put that down. I'll use this to just set the drive onto it. Try to keep it protected. And have a look inside my bays here. like one of the bays that's available may have screws in the side. There's one that definitely does not. So this is a little holder for a hard drive. 
and that bay I think has screws not even sure so I'm gonna grab a screwdriver I'll pause the video and then we'll uh, dig deeper into this hey after a bit of detective work what I've seen is inside this computer there really aren't any mounting screws for the hard drive. There's mounting screws to hold the cage that would hold a hard drive, but there aren't any spare screws. The screws are these little guys here, maybe a little bit hard to see. This goes, these go into the side of the hard drive and they will hold the hard drive in the cage. So this is typical, little curveballs come up. So what you can do in this situation is some of my cages that are sitting there waiting for a hard drive, there's the correct size screws. So I could take a screw from one or two of the spare cages and use them to mount the hard drive into a different cage and it would be held securely and you do want it to be held securely because uh, you need to move computers around you don't want things falling around in there the hard drives can be a bit heavy especially if they were loose and they fell and cracked your motherboard you could end up with your computer being useless but in this case um, as i showed before i've got this little cage device that slid out of one of the metal hardware cages and now that I'm aware I don't have screws in the side holes of the cages that are just there waiting for a hard drive I looked closer at this cage that I kind of ignored before and I see there's some little protrusions coming out of it that look like they might fit into the screw holes of the hard drive so I've actually never come across this configuration before but even though it's actually cost me some time because I was a little bit perplexed about how I was gonna actually physically attach this hard drive I think it's actually meant to make things faster <laughs> uh, so if you come across this, uh, maybe you will uh, just do it quite quickly because you already saw me scratching my head wondering what in the world was going on. So I will see if my new hard drive can go into this little plastic cage here. So when the cage came out, it had these little flexy things here. So before I put the hard drive in there, I'll just make sure there's a Make sure I'm getting it in there the right way. I think it might need to go around this way. Yeah, that goes in nice and easy. Clips right in there. And when it clips in, it's pretty secure. So we'll pull that out of there again and see if we can't get it to mount that way. So where the spare power cable is, before you slide this thing into that little cage, of course, you want to make sure your connectors that you don't touch are facing front, not backwards. Because the spacing of these screw holes, you could, in theory, put it in there the wrong way around. And normally that's probably what I would do the first time around, because <laughs> for whatever reason, that's kind of how I roll with stuff. Uh, but I do get it to work eventually, and uh, over the years, I've uh, done a lot of pretty good work as well. So let's see if these little holes go into that hard drive one way or another. These little protrusions here. that way around Get 
seems to be lining up on that side. So I'll have to bend it to get it to clear this other side. And those little, uh, they're kind of like rivets, I guess. Once I fumbled around a bit there, there was finding the right orientation. It snapped right in, no screws. So that's actually quite good. So I believe it, it'll go into this wider one, but you, you just slide it onto the one, obviously, that it fits on. So we'll slide this hard drive in. Okay, so hard drive is in the computer. And I'm gonna move my other camera over here because I just, I, I wanna make sure this is getting captured properly. Yeah, so we can see it there. Camera on camera, this high tech stuff's just great. <laughs> so the power cable. Yeah, it looks like out of the three different connector strips of those gold strips that I showed you along the side, uh, it goes on the widest one. This connector, yeah, it is keyed. So what that means is on this one side of the connector, there's actually a little protrusion, a little bump. And on the other side of it, it's just smooth. So when I look at these connectors along the side of the hard drive, I can see a, a, a notch over up top here. So if I turn that around, that part that was sticking out, get a little closer here so I can, uh, so I can see. So it's a fairly firm connection. So what I'm doing is just gently pushing along the top and the bottom. And that kind of slowly kind of wiggled it into place in this kind of a motion. And then I felt it click and I heard it click. So I give it a little bit of, give it a little bit of a tug. And the only thing that happens is the hard drive actually tries to come out. So important to make sure your cables are secure. If it was only half on, um, you could cause a short circuit, uh, you could cause damage. Um, and if you're lucky and you don't, you could have things just not work, um, which again is frustrating and by the time you have the computer all installed and hook up all the cables and everything else, and then you're like, uh-oh, it doesn't work. Now you gotta pull it all out of there again. So better to just make sure your cables are on there securely in the beginning. All right, <clears throat> so we got another package. This SAT cable. So SATA, I think it stands for Serial Advanced Technology Adapter. So basically just uh, lingo that means the uh, motherboard and the central processing unit are able to write data onto the hard drive and read it from the hard drive. So we got our cable here. Now the other... Uh, Part of the fun, if you want to call it that, is uh, whether or not this is going to be a long enough cable. So I just kind of guessed, and uh, 
there's various lengths of these SAT cables available for sale. <clears throat> so just as a precautionary thing, I went with a little bit longer cable. So if the cable's too long, you need to make sure that it's not going to cause trouble, like somehow poking into a fan blade or something on a power supply, things like that. But it'll work. If the cable's too short, yeah, you got a problem. <laughs> it obviously ain't going to work. So this will go on to... So if you look inside here, you can see as well, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, maybe. Yeah, it looks like seven pin connections. So when I look over here, there's a connector coming off of the hard drive that's wider and again it also looks like it's a seven pin connector and there's a little notch so if I look for a little yeah there's a little bump there a protruding area on the cable connector so that tells me which way to turn it to plug it in to the appropriate size connector on the hard drive Nice click. So we got one end of the cable, the data connection made. Now it looks like this is gonna be plenty long enough, which is good. Like I said, better to have a cable a little too long than uh, one that's too short. Ideally you have the exact length, but uh, that's a bit of a fantasy thing too. All right, so way down inside here, I'll move the GoPro and get a light on here. So inside at the back there, just on the right hand side there. And so right now my flashlight is uh, glaring off some electronics. Just to the right of that, there's some connector spots. So those uh, you probably can't see on the video, but those are labeled SAT. So that's the spot that I need to route the cable into and plug it in. So I'll get this uh, cable back here. Just move my camera back. Just hang on a sec and I'll set things up. Okay, so I think I've got things a little bit uh, lined up. This is a little bit fun, uh, not just doing the uh, hard drive, but also uh, learning how to video while doing a procedure. So thanks for your patience. So this cable, which now looks like it's plenty long enough, and that's great news. I'm just gonna route it in behind some other things here so it's not flopping around. Okay, so again, we have the keyed connector. So I'll take a gander in there. So the keyed part of the connector or the uh, protrusion, if you want to call that, call it that, needs to go upward. 
So you may not be able to see this alteration, but I just got to feed this in, line up the cable with the header, and there's the click. So data cable is in place, power cable is in place, hard drive is in place. Where the cable routes right now, you may be able to see on the video, I think you can, there's a little bit of a loop of extra cable here. However, there it's not near any fans, it's not near anything where it could be damaged or get caught on things. Uh, one of the things you also have to be aware of is making sure that the cable maybe isn't just gonna get pinched by the uh, cover for the case when you slide it back in there. So we should be able to just pop the cover back on and put this uh, back in place, connect all the cables up and see if we've got another hard drive or not. So there's one other thing I should mention now that I'm just about to put the cover back on the case. The cover, has vent holes and those need to line up with this metal box here that also has a bunch of vent holes that's the power supply and it needs to vent out heat heat is the number one enemy of electronics components will cause them to age faster um, in addition to static charge that could destroy components immediately uh, heat too much heat may cause your electronics or your computer to even fail if you were, say, blocking the vent where the power supply vents heat out and you had it up against something, your computer wouldn't be lasting too long. So I'll make sure I get the cover in place so the vent holes are correct, and then we'll put it back in place, connect the cables, and see if we got another hard drive. Okay, we're back. We got the computer running. No uh, sparks flying or any kind of exciting uh, action like that, so that's super good. Uh, didn't expect there would be anything along those lines. Um, so, I go into my setup on my computer here. I also didn't hear any funny noises, uh, any of that sort of thing. So I look at my drives on the screen here, and I see a C drive and a D drive. A uh, USB drive if I had something plugged in and uh, a drive for my DVDs. So what I don't see is my brand new drive. It's like, ooh, okay, this is this is not good. Don't really want to pull that computer out again and uh, go through all that hoops. So it's been a long time since I put in a new hard drive. So I went to dr google or google the techie guy and uh, asked and i got these instructions um basically tells you to right click on the windows icon go to device manager so i will go through the motions here and disk drives and aha in the list of drives i see a toshiba drive so you may recall when I showed you the package in the box that my new drive is a Toshiba. So I've never had that before, and now I do. So if I right-click that, it says uh, Update Driver. So let's give that a whirl. Search automatically for drivers. Okay, so I verified that the new drive shows in Device Manager. I was curious whether the generic Windows driver was maybe not working for this device because it's a high performance drive, some such thing. Went to the Toshiba site, didn't see any unique special driver or messages that says, hey, you, you got to put this driver on, the, the Windows one won't work. So there was nothing like that. So the next step is uh, the device is there, so you got to go back to Windows. And you got to go into disk management. So we've got a new device. It's there. Windows sees it. It shows Toshiba. So now we go disk management. And 
up it pops and says, hey, you got a, a drive in there that's not initialized. Well, everything I had in there was running, had data on it. This says I have to initialize something. I don't know why it would be called disk one when it's really not the disk number one, but aside from that, the only drive that can be in my computer that isn't initialized is the new one. So it's telling me to go ahead and initialize. So I'll just hit OK here. We'll see how long this takes. Right now I'm not getting any feedback. It's not telling me anything. So let's see. Oh, now when I right click here, it gives me uh, some options. Simple volume, spanned volume, striped volume. I don't know what those mean. Simple sounds like it would just be one big drive, which would work. So let's just go with a simple volume. Sounds okay to me. It's showing a four gigabyte drive, simple volume. Drive letter G, that sounds good. Volume label. I'm going to call it video disk. formatted my drive and boom it shows so took me a little while to figure it out I had to do some googling and that's a good example for this kind of thing I've been doing this sort of thing for a long time it doesn't mean I know how to do everything and when you're doing technical things you really shouldn't pretend you know you should just admit what you don't know and go and find an answer so in this case after I got it in there I did everything correctly as far as anti-static, making sure the power was off, making sure the drive was securely mounted, making sure the cables were securely mounted. Started up the computer, didn't see it, and I needed to go into Device Manager, first of all, just to make sure Windows saw the drive and that its drivers were okay. Then I had to go into Disk Manager to format the drive, get it ready to go, and then it appeared under Windows, and now I have a new drive. So our limitations in rapidly disappearing drive D that you see here, with uh, drive C being very full, now we've got all kinds of space, so we can start doing more editing and get videos out to you. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you learned something. If you're putting in a hard drive and you got any questions, please put comments in the video. If you like the video, please uh, hit a thumbs up and subscribe, and I will be putting up more of this type of video in the future. So, for now, thanks. We'll see you again.